Hi there, and welcome to the Ice Tech Guide. In this instalment, we're gonna look at fitting and setting the chain length on your new trike. Before we do this job, however, you need to make sure that the boom is set for the correct leg length. To see how to do this, check out our rider positioning film. Okay, back to the chain. So you're gonna need a few tools if you wanna set your chain length. You need a chain rivet tool, you're gonna need some chain pliers, you need a sharp knife and probably some disposable gloves just because it's quite a greasy job to do. If you're working with your trike on the floor, you want to make sure that your parking brake is done up so your trike can't roll around. And it's also easier to remove the seat of the trike just for access to everything. Right, so as you can see just here, the uh, chain tube set on a new trike comes all wrapped up to protect the trike from the chain tubes in the box. You need to remove this plastic packaging with either some scissors or a sharp knife. So there's normally a couple of splits in it already. As you're doing this, obviously be careful not to damage your frame anywhere. There we go. Okay, might also be worth keeping the plastic because as you can see on here, we've got uh, a picture guide to show you um, how the chain goes through everything in a second. Obviously this video is gonna teach you how to do that as well. Okay, so that's your unwrapped chain tube set. Every ice trike model with the exception of the lightweight race oriented BTX comes with a chain tube set fitted. These low friction plastic tubes protect your clothing from the chain and the chain from the elements. The chain tube set is bolted onto the main frame of the trike here underneath the steering. If you look here, you'll find a steel pulley plate with the chain tubes mounted to it. And in front of that, the pulley wheel. A Couple of checks we need to do before we get started. Make sure the pulley itself is spinning freely on its bearings and the chain tubes themselves can actually move on the pulley plate. This is essential for when changing gear. You'll also see here attached to the pulley plate, a small bag. This contains the chain's quick links. These are used for joining the two pieces of chain together. Now, remove this bag, but put it safely aside because you're gonna need it shortly. Okay, so I've just put the trike in a work stand. This just makes it a bit easier for me to demonstrate fitting the chain whilst talking to camera. We've talked about where the chain tubes mount on the frame here. You'll also notice that the lower chain tube is zip tied to the frame and the top chain tube goes through this Velcro loop on the back end. These two points reduce chain flap over rough ground and help to keep the uh, chain tubes where they're supposed to be when the trike is being folded. Looking a little further back again, you'll notice this trike has a second pulley fitted. Any ice trike with a 26 inch or a 700C rear wheel and the road response suspension will have a pulley fitted here. This is for two reasons. One, to keep the chain away from the seat rails if your seat is very reclined. And two, to keep the chain line running directly through the pivot point on the suspension. This means that the suspension is less affected by pedal load as you're pedaling. Okay, so you'll probably have noticed me refer to the top and bottom chain tubes a few times in this video already. Let me briefly explain what I'm talking about. All chains on bikes or trikes have a top and a bottom chain. The top chain is referred to as the drive chain, and that's the chain that's under load as you pedal and pushes you forward. The bottom part of the chain is the chain that is a return chain. It's returning from the pedals back to the back of the bike or trike. When setting the chain up on a trike, you've got a lot of chain, and a lot of length from front to back. It's quite easy to get them the wrong way round. If you do that, what will happen is you'll end up with a figure of eight, and when you pedal, all you'll achieve is to spin your cassette backwards and you won't get anywhere. We've all done it, I know I have. Uh, it's quite easy to do. But our chain tube sets come with stickers on um, at the back here and at the front so you know which chain goes at the top and which chain goes at the bottom. Okay, the last thing we need to check before setting the chain length is that this top chain tube at the front here is not coming into contact with the front derailleur cage. This can happen with shorter boom lengths. So if they are clashing or close like this, the chain tube will need to be cut. 
We recommend a gap of two to two and a half centimetres between the end of the tube and the front derailleur. To cut this, you'll need a sharp knife or a pipe cutter and a bit of care because it can be a bit fiddly to do. Okay, this job needs to be done with the chain inside the chain tube. So make sure that you leave the R pin in. If you take this R pin out, the chain will drop through the chain tubes and there's a bit of a pain to get back through. I've moved the top tube sticker back, leaving it on the tube so I know which one's which. Okay, so now we have our cut. We need to pull the chain through slightly. Now hold the chain itself and remove the R pin, allowing the off cut of tube to come off and then simply replace the R-pin so we don't lose the chain down the chain tubes. Okay, so we're finally into it. Let's get working on setting the chain. Before we do that, we need to make sure that both derailleurs are in their lowest position on the smallest sprocket on the chain set and the smallest sprocket on the cassette. If you've got bar and shifters, it usually means that your bar and shifters are tipped all the way back, okay? Next, you need to make sure you'll have all your tools and the quick links that you snipped off here in a bag to hand. Gloves. New chains are really greasy and the grease is an absolute nightmare to get off. So it's always a good idea if you've got access to some to try and find yourself some gloves to do this next part. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you'll notice that the excess chain is in a bag zip tied to the rear of the chain tubes here. If you're working on the floor, before you snip this, it's always worth putting some protection down on the floor, just to protect your floor from the greasy chain and also can protect the chain from picking up dirt off whatever floor you're working on. Okay. So, what you need to do, snip the zip tie, holding the bag on. and get your chain out like this. Okay, so you'll notice on the chain that there are R pins attached to it. This is uh, obviously to stop the chain moving through the chain tubes in transit. What we need to do now is we need to move these R pins right towards the back of the chain, leaving a little bit of excess. The reason for this is that we're going to pull the chain through to the front of the chain tube shortly. Okay. And so those all set to pull through. Okay, so now take the chains at the front of the trike, the top and the bottom chain, and we can pull them through the chain tubes. As you're pulling the chains through, be careful not to twist either of them. With a chain this long, it's quite easy to end up with a twist once the chain is linked up. Take your top chain, Remove the R pin and then we feed the chain through the front derailleur and around the small sprocket on the chain set. Right, take your bottom chain tube, your return chain and remove the R pin from the end. Now you're going to need your first quick link. The quick links to come in two halves. The halves are absolutely identical. And all you do is you push one half through the end of the return chain and push the other half through the end of the drive chain the opposite direction. Okay, so they'll look like this. You then simply place them together and they lock together by pulling. Now you'll see that that one actually locked together quite easily. Some of them don't, some of them can be a right pain. There's a couple of different ways you can get those to lock in if they don't pull together. One is a set of these. These are quick link pliers. They're actually designed for undoing by squeezing like that, but they can be used to do quick links up as well by placing them in the link either side and opening them up. If you don't have access to any chain pliers and you can't get your quick link to click together, leave it for now, leave it unclicked. Once the back end is set up, what we can do 
is we can run the chain through the chain tubes until the quick links are on the drive chain, the top chain. Make sure the trike is static and use the cranks themselves as a lever to click those quick links into place. Okay, so now we've got the chain linked up at the front. We need to pull the length of the chain to the back here. So we need to take the chain coming out of the top tube and pull this all the way through until it starts to pull the bottom tube through to the R pin there. This gives you all this excess chain to work with getting through the rear derailleur. Now, before we do that, we need to remove this R pin again. Okay, so before we get to the derailleur, this is a 26 RS trike, which means it has this second pulley on the back end. So take your top chain and feed it through between the metal retention tab on the bottom there and the pulley itself. Pull that all the way through and then we can get to the rear derailleur. To start with, your chain needs to pass between the chain stay and the seat stay of the back end and loop around the smallest sprocket on the cassette. It then passes in front of the top jockey wheel. Jockey wheels are these cogs in the rear derailleur here. So we go in front of the first one. If you push the derailleur cage down, you'll see that there's a small metal tab in between the two jockey wheels. The chain needs to pass behind this metal tab, like this, and behind the bottom jockey wheel, around like that. Once your chain is through properly, it should look like that around the smallest sprocket, in front of the top jockey wheel, behind the metal tab, behind the bottom jockey wheel, like so. Okay, so here we are, time to set the chain length. Before doing so, make sure you have your chain splitting tool to hand. I've been working on bikes and trikes for about 20 years and the amount of times I've worked out which link I need to split and then realized that this is the other side of the room and had to drop it all, runs into the hundreds. It's very frustrating. Make sure it's right next to you before you do this next bit. Also make sure you have your second quick links to hand. Right, so take the two lengths of chain and place them in line with each other like this. Now what we need to do to get the correct chain length is we need to put some tension on the rear derailleur. As you can see here, when we pull on this chain, it's collapsed onto itself. So these two pieces of chain are touching. And what we need to see is for a bit of tension on this. So we get a gap just here, but we want the smallest gap possible. So bring your chain up to together like that, and then pull the chain until The, end, the thin end of the chain here matches up with one of the fat links just there. Now this fat link, this is going to re be replaced by the quick link. So we've got a gap here. We've got tension on the derailleur. We know where we want to split it. It's just here. We want to take that fat link off. So we have two narrow ends of chain to link with a quick link. So now we know which link we're splitting. We need to take our chain tool. The chain sits into it like so. And you wind the pin in like this. And you simply wind and it pushes the chain rivet out of the other side of the chain. You don't have to push it all the way through. There we go. Okay, all that remains 
is to fit your second quick link. Same as before, one half goes into one end of the chain, the other half into the other end of the chain in the opposite way, in the opposite orientation. Give the return chain a quick twist in both directions just to make sure it isn't twisted in the chain tube and then bring them together. And we can again use the chain pliers to click it into place. Then remove the last R pin and that is your chain length set. Okay, all that remains now is to check through the gears just to make sure that the chain isn't too short. If you're doing this on the floor, you might need a second person to lift the back wheel of your trike off the ground. It's a bit difficult to spin the pedals and do that at the same time and change through the gears. You kind of need four hands. Um, this needs to be done in a specific order because if the chain is too short, it could damage components. So first of all, shift to the largest chain ring on your chain set. Then slowly shift up through the rear sprockets. You need to stop on the second largest sprocket and check that the rear derailleur still has some forward movement available. If it does, you should be fine to shift to the largest sprocket. This means your chain length is correct. Now is also a great opportunity to make sure there are no twists in your chain. So whilst turning the pedals, check that the chain is entering and exiting the chain tubes straight. Then you can check that you can twist it either way, like so, and that it's not locked into a twist like this, which would mean that there is actually a twist in the chain that you need to sort out. And last but not least, the basic method of setting your chain applies to our electric and hub gear trikes as well. With a roll-off or an Alpine hub gear, you will have a chain tensioner instead of a derailleur. The same method of fitting your chain applies to these, although when putting tension on the chain, we actually recommend bringing the chain tensioner to around about halfway through its forward travel. This will actually give you the most boom adjustment in either direction as you dial in your trike. Trikes with the MVO low hub gear system also use a Shimano Alphine chain tensioner mounted forward of the hub. The same thing applies to this setup as well. Okay, thanks for watching. For more information, go to our website, www.icetrikes.co and fill out our contact form or contact your local dealership.